So we just found out that CJ McCollum has been playing with a broken back. Now, as scary as that sounds in this video, we're gonna talk about why it's actually not as concerning as it sounds on paper. Welcome back everyone, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about everything related to sports injuries and sports medicine news. Now as you saw, it can be very concerning to read that one of your favorite players on your favorite team making a playoff push has a broken back. And yes, that sounds scary, but as we'll discuss in the video, based on where his fracture is and sort of the anatomical structure and function of that area of the spine, it's really not as serious as it sounds. As always, if you enjoy learning about this unique side of sports, then please consider subscribing to my channel. Be sure to go follow me on Twitter for more real-time injury breakdowns and analysis, and let's get started. Diving right into our anatomy of the spine here, this is kind of our entire spinal column. We have the cervical vertebrae, or bones of the spine, up in the neck. We then have the thoracic vertebrae, kind of in the mid portion of the back. We have our lumbar vertebrae down in the lower back, and then we of course have our sacrum and our pelvis, or the hip bones here on the side. Now specifically in the low back, or the lumbar vertebrae, we have five specific ones. Starting at the bottom, this is the fifth, and then the fourth, the third, so on, all the way up to the top. Now McCollum's fracture is reportedly a transverse process fracture, non-displaced at L3. So we can focus in here on this third lumbar vertebrae, but Really, they all kind of function and look about the same when we get down into the area of the low back. Now, as you can tell from looking at these, there's all kinds of little kind of bony pieces or what we call processes that protrude off of each of these vertebral bodies. These ones here out on the side that go out transversely, those are the transverse processes. So each of these lumbar vertebrae have a left and a right transverse process. Now the kind of big bump that comes out the back of the vertebral body is the spinous process. The vertebral body itself is this kind of bigger chunk of bone in the front. And then we have kind of multiple other areas on the spine here that we won't get into in this video. Now you can probably kind of intuitively look at this picture and understand why a fracture to this little piece of bone out here might not be as bad as a fracture to say, this big vertebral body in the front. Certainly when we have a vertebral body fracture, there's a lot of compressive load going through those pieces of bone and so it has a higher risk of being unstable and causing more shift and more problems in the spine. But some of these other pieces of bone that don't really have any true kind of structural support to our axial skeleton, when you have a fracture there, they're not as severe when it comes to being unstable and causing problems with your nerves and such. If I zoom out a little bit here, you can see the yellow spinal cord that kind of runs down inside that sort of inner hole in our spinal column. And then of course, each of these small little holes on the side here are gonna be where each individual nerve root leaves the spinal column to go out to the muscles. So again, there's really not much in terms of nerves or structural support at these little transverse processes. Now what we do have here is a lot of muscular and ligament attachments. So what I've done here is I've turned on all the different muscles that we see in the layers around the spine in the different portions of the back. And as you can see, there's a lot of different layers of muscles that are running between all of these bones in our back. We have these big long muscle groups called the erector spinae that run kind of almost all the way up the entire length of the back here. But then if we go down even deeper to these lower layers of muscle in the back, we can see that we still have even more complexity to all these tiny little muscles that are running up and down our spinal column. I mean, look all these tiny little bands of muscle here these are all specific muscles. These little highlighted ones are the rotatories lumborum. We have our multifides muscles on either side. There's even muscles that span between those transverse processes that we just talked about. So you can see there's all kinds of complexity in terms of muscle attachments between these different processes in the spine. So getting back to this transverse process fracture, again, this isn't like one of these vertebral bodies is just crushed in the back. That would be something that McCollum would have to be out for because you wouldn't be able to play with it. But if you just have a little non-displaced fracture of one of these transverse processes, again, there's not really much structurally that it's doing. Certainly it's gonna be painful. Whenever you have a fracture there, that can cause additional irritation and strain on those little tiny muscles, which can lead to muscle spasms and be very debilitating and make it hard to do anything, let alone play basketball. But it's not like this is a type of fracture where his spinal cord is just vulnerable and on the edge of getting crushed or smashed to the point where he'd be paralyzed. This really in most cases is something that if pain isn't too bad, 
you're not gonna do surgery for, especially if it's not displaced. You know, sometimes, like I said, because these nerve roots are traveling out near these areas, sometimes you could have some inflammation and irritation where those nerve roots might get a little bit irritated and cause some nerve type pain. But again, it's really more about managing the pain and being comfortable to allow the time for these fractures to heal. Certainly when Trailblazers fans see this news, they're gonna just freak out and be super scared hearing that one of their favorite players has a broken back. But hopefully like I've shown you here, you'll feel a little bit more calm and not as anxious that this is some imminent danger and threat to his back. The team doctors and medical staff are gonna be very smart about this. They're gonna monitor his pain. I'm sure they have great imaging to demonstrate how stable this is and if there's any damage to surrounding structures. So fans should have confidence in the medical staff to handle this appropriately. Really. We've just got to see how McCollum responds in terms of pain and how well he's able to play on the court. Certainly tonight against the Mavs, he didn't look that great, but was still able to play and hopefully this just continues to get better if the Trailblazers are able to make a run into the playoffs. So that's it for the video, everybody. Thank you as always for watching. Hope you learned something here about exactly where this fracture is and why it really isn't all that concerning from kind of a medical perspective. Be sure to leave any questions or comments below and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.